So here we are in the back of both units again. Now it's time to hook this up for reamping using the three cable slash four cable method, whatever you want to call it. Now remember, this is set up with the 003 and the 11 rack connected with SPDIF cables. So what we're going to do right here on the back of the 11 rack unit, you'll see the output to amp number two right. We're going to plug just a standard audio cable quarter inch right into that output. And the other end will be going into the end of number five. It doesn't have to be number five. It can be one through four even, or it could be six, seven, eight. It could be whatever you choose, but we're going with five. Now, let's get back to reamping and set this up in Pro Tools. We plug the guitar directly into the guitar True Z input. Since the output to amps option are independent of each other, as the left is independent from the right, as you can kind of see here, then you can choose which signal is going to each. Another thing you could do, instead of just plugging in, say, the right, which we did on the back, and right into uh, input 5 of the 003, we can also plug in output to amp left and run this to input 6 or 7 or whatever. First things you're going to want to do is make sure your other audio interface, in this case the 003 rack, is set as your playback engine. Now if you have two Avid or DigiDesign interfaces connected to the same computer, the other interface should always default to being the current engine, in this case the 003 rack. Now if it's not, all you need to do is come here to set up, playback engine, current engine if it's set on 11 rack then you'll just change it to the 003 or whatever your other interface is you'll also get a message that looks like this you'll hit yes your session will close down and reopen with the other interface as your current engine okay in this video I'm going to show you how to reamp when you're using the 11 rack connected to another digital design or avid device. In this case it's going to be the 003 again. So in order to do that let's go ahead and start a new session. Those settings are fine. And we will name this how to reamp. We'll call it 2. Okay, now you may notice that uh, in my session I automatically have a click track come up. Uh, you can do that too. Just go here to uh, Setup, click Preferences, drag us over from the other screen, MIDI tab. Right here is a box you can check or uncheck. Automatically create click track in new sessions. I have it checked so that way anytime I make a new session I have a click track automatically uh, created. Of course also you can always create a click track. I come into track and click create click track. But we don't need that. Okay so let's go ahead and create our tracks. Drag this over from my other screen. 
and we'll create uh we'll just say three mono audio tracks and uh, let's just say two stereo and then a stereo master fader and that should do it all right so this one let's go ahead and name let's name this dry because this will be our dry guitar track let's name this one wet this is gonna be our rig that's coming right from the 11 rack let's name this one ramp mono and let's name this one reamp stereo now we're ready to start recording but first let's make sure we uh, set up our tracks correctly now remember in this uh, tutorial we're going to go out of the uh, output to amp right which is on the back of the 11 rack and that's going in to uh, input 5 on the 003 rack now I just chose input 5 but you really could use any input you want you could even use 1 through 4 on the 003 rack if you wanted and you could uh, change the level of your input that way if you wanted to so just uh, experiment and uh, whatever gives you the best sound is what is correct don't just uh, don't just go by what you may think is correct or what's said to be correct what sounds the best is what is correct alright so let's go ahead and set this up now remember we already have this set up firewire rack is internal 11 rack is SPDIF external these settings have not been changed since this is going to be our dry track our input will be interface 5 since this is going to be our wet track in other words the track where we're going to hear the rig while we're recording or while we're practicing or working out a working out an idea the input of this again since we're in SPDIF will be SPDIF left right and remember we have already have this set up where the embedded settings are from SPDIF left right the outputs is rig outputs which is what we want right now and the rig input is the guitar so now let's get ready to just record a little bit let me turn this down a bit we'll leave that about there so now we plug our guitar right into the guitar input on the 11 rack right into the true Z input okay now we have uh, okay now I got my guitar hooked up so let's record enable our wet track let's see if we get signal Yep. Now we're going to mute this for a second. Now we're going to record enable our dry track. Remember, we're going in to input 5 on the 003. And remember, we're going out of output to amp right on the back of the 11 rack. So now this is record enabled. Also remember, we went into the 11 rack and we made sure we set the output to amp right to rig input you can do that on the rag itself or you can do it from here as well here's a two amp position this is right this is number two so that's the right rig input that's going to be the out we can also go and change the left if you wanted and you can actually run the left you can run the left also into your uh, 03 rack or other device or you can run it to an amp or you can run it to you know possibilities are endless but the only one we're dealing with in this tutorial 
is the right. So rig input. If you chose rig output, then we'd we'll get the dirty signal, which we don't want. We want just the straight, dry guitar, which is why we're choosing rig input. So now our wet track here is muted. It's still record enabled. Now we record enabled the dry track. And then we should just get a nice clean sound. Which we do, which is exactly what we want. Now if you were to record like this, that could get rather annoying because you're having the dry sound and the wet sound. So you'd put that on mute. I always put it on mute. That way we just have the wet sound. So now, let's just record a little bit. Alright, so you get the idea. So now that we have all that recorded, we're going to hit stop, take this off mute, take these off record enable. Once again, you can see here that we did record. Like I said, I have two screens and I can't record both screens at once. So here's what we recorded. Okay, now I've cut up this little bit of messing around I was doing. Get that out of the way. You see I've cut it up here. <laughs> 